Now, I came in here to my office and I sat down after having been outside with these two cameras. I ran the two cameras a little more than 300 feet apart. And then I continued past the furthest camera about another 100, 120 feet so that I could test what it's like to run two Slate AXT 1800 travel routers, one for each camera, but in extension mode. Uh, it's called WDS, Wireless Distribution System, so that you can take the original router, cause the second one to just simply duplicate the first one, repeat it. It has its own SSID. I just got through connecting one camera to, to one of my slate routers, the other camera to the other one, two different SSIDs, but you could get to both cameras through either router. So I could have one attached to this camera. I could have the other attached to this camera, have them 300 feet apart because the access point, the router is right there with the camera. There's no issue. The routers then talk to each other and I can be within reasonable distance of the main one, the one that's being duplicated with my iPad and have a wonderfully clear, but long distance, long distance stream. So let's walk through the setup process together. We're gonna to go to 192.168.1 in a browser and we will set up the first router according to its instructions. On the second router, you're going to go to the same place and log in to it, but then go to network and then network mode. We're looking for WDS. When you click on that, it's gonna take the time to pull up other routers. Be patient, that's not a fast process. I'm gonna connect it to my original Slate router, and I'm gonna do so to the 2.4 gigahertz side because it's longer distance. Put in the password, and we can be done. Let's go back over to the original one, click on clients, and now I can see I have my second Slate, as one of my clients, and it has changed the IP address to 178 at the end. When I log back into the second one, so that the next time I want to log into that router, I go to that address, password stays the same. Now I can go over to Nearstream, and I can set up my camera. So I'm gonna connect one to each of these routers. The second one is acting in repeater mode. So we'll connect the original router to one of my cameras. We'll connect the repeater router to the other of my cameras. And now that each of them are connected to their own router, I'm going to put my iPad back on the original router network, that is the 74F here, because it's the one that's connected directly to internet and that's the route I want to take. If I'm set up close enough, I'll go ahead and ethernet it into my iPad, but this is an acceptable solution too, each on its own router. I can see both of them. I can connect to both of them, even though I'm only connected to the one that ends in 74F. And now I have everything in the Nearstream app. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see how each of these pieces are, uh, are positioned next to each other. Uh, physical turn of that camera to move it sideways there. But you can see that I have my iPad to the left, and then I have the slate connected to a battery next to it. I have my hotspot there uh, moving toward the right, and then I have the camera on the right-hand side. For the other setup that I'm using, this mock-up in my office, I have the camera to the left, and then the second slate and its battery to the right. We're gonna see how far we can stretch this connection. I've got one of my Slate AXT 1800 travel routers mounted here, connected to my hotspot there. I've got four bars of service, streaming won't be a problem. It's battery powered because I've got a battery bank connected to the Slate there. We're gonna take the other one. Right about there. And see if we can get a video signal from here to there with any kind of reliability with the other Slate AXT travel router. I'm going to use two Nearstream VM33 cameras because it's time to see if we can get an over the shoulder from center field shot between the pitcher and the batter. Its uh, depth goes for this one that has the sky in the background. I'm going to make an image adjustment with taking auto exposure 
nope, not auto exposure, with taking auto white balance off. That way it won't flash with those clouds as they move. All right, so let's go test this, uh, this distance, right? Now, at some point, I'm going to want to zoom this side view so I can just talk to you, right? So far, what I've got is a screen grab recording happening, and I'm also recording the shots. Uh, right now, I'm recording this side view as I walk out to the pitcher's mound. Okay. Now, it's not adjusted so that I can zoom a whole lot and stay in frame. That's the one downfall of the VM33 software. I, don't, I have to physically move the camera in order to change the overall view that I'm looking at. So, uh, although this is a great shot here to there, uh, if I were to punch in just a little bit, I might could do even a little bit better but I'll probably lose the batter if I do that. Yeah, so uh, what I'll do then is I'll come over here where I have zoomed into so that I can talk to you. Now the, the camera is actually at the first base dugout. So let's zoom back out so you can kind of get an idea of the distance that I am, uh, I'm asking this camera to, to record in. There we go. I missed the slider. It's a little bit sunny out here, so unless I turn around and put myself in the, as a shadow, I don't get everything. All right, so that's that, that's our overall view, and then I can uh, I'll put I'll push in you know five or six or seven clicks there. Uh, a little bit breezy today. I'm using a microphone with a wind muff. It's a uh, it's also a Nearstream micro Neurom. Uh, you know them on Amazon as Nearstream. Uh, really good microphone. Did they sent it to me. I'd, I had said I was through reviewing any more microphones this year, uh, but they sent it to me anyway, and really kind of glad they did. All right, so we're punched in uh, to 10 clicks, and I'm, uh, I'm talking to the mic to the uh, camera that is over there at the first base dugout. I am a little off center, uh, but about halfway between home and first. All right, so let's start dealing with the camera that is in center field. Let's close this in our software. We'll punch to over there. Now that is, <laughs> it's magnetically mounted to a fence and it is breezy so it's moving and I apologize for that. However, I think we can kind of get the idea. As of now, we're punched into 19 clicks. Let me go ahead and zoom all the way out and we'll start again. That would be much better mounted on a tripod back there, uh, but it's, it's coming over that wall and I've got it mounted up close to the wall. I didn't even get a chance to, to, to uh, frame it up left to right so it's actually horizontal <laughs> you know so your horizon is level uh, which i you know i tell people to do that all the time and i didn't but if i punch it back into 15 clicks it's going to come on in toward me i'm going to have to scoot over a little bit to stay in the center of the frame okay you see how that did all right so there i am uh, pitcher's mount is just in front of me. Home plate is just behind me. I'm a little closer to home than I am to the pitcher's mount. If I go ahead and punch into 20 clicks. Yep. That would be actually a pretty good shot. Now I'm going to be a little bit uh, tall for this pitcher's mount when I get there, right? But to have this shot of a pitcher here, if I was up a little bit right and then to have that over the shoulder to the batter I'm gonna uh, be lined up let's see I'm off enough there to not be able to actually see the bag for uh, for second base but I can I can adjust that left or right on the fence out there and catch that and then here's here's how much of the batter is going to be in view from this shot. So I could probably go around towards center field. I'm not, I'm not dead on center field because I didn't want to, didn't want to have the pitcher over the batter, right? So I'm a little bit off toward right field. I can go towards center field just a little bit and catch a really good at 20 clicks. I've still got 20 clicks to go, but if I were then to punch this in, I'm going to have to, <laughs> I've got it just a little bit low, don't I? I'm going to have to get down here if I'm going to keep myself in view. And I'm going to have to scoot over because I bet I, yep, ride myself right out of the frame. 
Uh, so I'm, I'm actually this way. So I'm out of the batter's box now. But, uh, but to be able to punch in this far, uh, so the shakiness would be, would be cured by a tripod behind the fence. Uh, so to be able to mount there, uh, there, is, uh, there are a couple of light poles out there. That would take me too far off of center, though, I think, to get this view. So, uh, I, man, I think we can punch in this far. I look forward to seeing what the actual recording is. But I'm not dropping frames. I am, uh, I am steadily uh, matched up with, with what you're hearing and seeing um, from center field. Slate AXT travel router there, Slate AXT travel router at first base, and we're talking about, I'll throw on Google Maps to see how many feet we're actually, uh, how, how far apart in feet we are, but, uh, but yeah, this is, uh, is going to be a good view. 